Have you ever felt like you weren't good enough or maybe you didn't measure up? A recent study found that seven out of 10 young women felt that way, which is a huge majority. And I'm pretty sure it's not just them, that those feelings can affect all of us, regardless of our age or our gender. If that is you, my guest today is here to bring us some hope, Berlange Persilis, welcome. Thank you for having me, Cheryl. It's so great to have you here. And you have an incredible story. Growing up, you were affected by a disability. Tell me a little bit about why you were feeling those feelings. Well, I was born in Haiti. Um, growing up, I walked differently, crawled differently, per my parents would tell me. Um, I did not feel like I belong. So I began to have pain, lots of headaches, and we started seeing doctors from one doctor to the next doctor. I felt like I did not belong. I was not enough. God did not love me. Other children, other people were doing things that I wanted to do, I aspired to do. I just could not do them all because of this condition I was born with called Clipotranane, also known as KTS. It's a rare disorder that affects the, um, the veins and um, there's also internal issues, but the physical pain that it brought into my life is far more worse than anything else. Um, going back to seeing doctors from one doctor to the next specialist, I was never able to get diagnosis. Um, eventually I met a doctor that's, that suggested for me to get my leg amputated uh, with no guarantee that I would not feel any more pain. My parents opted out of that and rejected that option. I did not want to do that either. However, we, we continued seeing more doctors um, over and over from one doctor's, no, we cannot help you. We are not sure what this condition is called. Eventually, I met another doctor that I believe could have told me I had great hopes. Eventually, he said to me, well, you're having so many heart failures and heartaches, you are not going to make it past 19. You were 16 years old when you I was 16 that. years old, yes. My world came to crash and I was already feeling um, down. And imagine what it's that, what's that like? I'm already feeling down and not good enough. Not, but I had no sense of belonging in this world. And to hear that, I became more depressed and suicidal. Yeah, absolutely. So did you attempt to take your own life? Yes, I went ahead and attempt to take my own life. However, my mother stopped me. And for the first time ever, she spoke uh, love into my life. And I, I felt it for um, in a sense I mean before my friends and my family would tell me that I'm beautiful but I never saw I never saw it I never felt it I never understood what they were talking about since growing up I always I always hit I got teased uh, bullied in school I just never felt like I belong in this world so I decided since I've felt like this and the doctor confirmed it, I'm going to go ahead. There's no point of waiting for these uh, years to come. I just, I should just take my life right away. And the doctors were wrong. You <laughs> have obviously lived past 19, <laughs> yes. thankfully. Yes. But you still had that worry and fear. Even after you made it past what the doctor said, you still were really struggling with that worry and fear. So tell me about how you were processing all of that. Absol absolutely. Um, the pain too, like I said, is, is horrific. And there's time I don't even look outside of my room. I would stay in bed crying. Um, God, what is going on with me? Was I really born to suffer and die? This cannot happen. Um, eventually, I met a person who suggested to um, visit Cuba, and there I got diagnosed when I went and visited the female doctor. She looked at me, and right away, um, she said, well, you have Clifotranane. And it, I was excited. At the same time, I was still down and depressed because I knew there was no cure for that condition. Um, I went on and started doing more research and questioning God, why me? Just why me? I'm looking at these supermodels, other people that are doing great things in this, in this world, and I'm not able to, you know, for my own, um, what, what could I say, for, I, I, I it just, for, for my own disc discomfort, I was uncomfortable. I did not feel like I could be that person. So I started questioning God and I, I cursed God. Why me? You could have given that to my brothers. They, they're boys, they have to wear pants. I have to deal with this. This is a curse and I do not want to live anymore. So I started qu questioning God, continued. And you know, I would pray and pray, God, take this condition away, take it away. Um, I, I had two surgeries, I forgot to tell you that part. And when I had to do those surgeries, I was excited. 
that my life was going to change for the better. I was going to get new legs. And from that time, I prayed, God, if you love me, this is the test right now. If you love me after the surgery, make my leg what I considered before perfect. Make my legs perfect. And so I prayed, I fasted. God is going to give me this miracle. Mm. And after surgeries, my leg remained the same. If anything, I had far more pain and the blood clots began to appear. I was not happy with God. And I continue to question him, why me? Take this away. So it's true, you don't love me. But I never realized within all these episodes that I've had and um, living through these experiences, I never realized God had a greater purpose over my life. And this condition that I thought would be the death of me is actually the very condition that is making my life a living testimony. Mm -hmm. I, I get to testify and use this for his glory. I am well alive and still going. Amazing. Okay, we wanna continue with your story, so hang right there. When we come back, we're gonna find out how despite struggling with this painful disease, Berlange had her modeling dreams come true in a moment. We are back with Berlange Priscillis talking about how she's overcome a very painful disability. When we left off, you talked about how this has become a testimony. Talk to me about, you know, you grew up with a strong faith. So how are you processing this with God? You were saying, heal my leg, but your leg wasn't getting healed. Right, right. Uh, so at one point of my life, I realized everything that I was praying for was not happening and um, career was falling apart as being a model. Um, I was doing great things, but mentally I was feeling like I was not doing exactly, I was not fulfilling my purpose. So I finally said to God, I'm available, use me. Um, Although I said it, I don't think I was really ready um, because I kept rejecting the calling. Um, there's time that I would go to sleep, I would dream. This is exactly what you're supposed to do and everything else that you've been going through with me will make sense. Mm -hmm. Still yet, I rejected the calling. So you had this literally in, in actual dreams, you would dream about your destiny, but you you were not ready. Yes, no, I was not ready. I would, I would say, no, God, not me. If I ever talk about this and put it out there, I will be judged. My career will be over. No one will like me. You know, I've, I've, I've gone through the rejection, rejections. I've been bullied before. So now that I am an adult and open up about this, I, I, I will not be able to take on the, um, the, the, the stress and the rejections of the world. Yeah. Um, there's time I would be driving and I would hear, Berlange, you need to listen. I know everything that you dream of. I am God. Until you do what I've asked you to do, nothing will make sense. And that big thing that he's asked you to do is talk about your condition. Yes, and I would confuse it as maybe my smile. Should I go around and smile at everyone because everyone would compliment my, my smile, but that was not it. And once I figured perhaps it was my leg, I said, no way, God, no. No, but I still felt empty inside. Mm. And deep down in, I knew this was it, but I was not ready. I cried in the night times, in the midnight hours, I would pray, I would pray over and over. And God was saying, listen to my command. Until you do this, you will continue to feel empty. You need to lose your flesh, live for me. I am taking you places, but you need to be ready I am ready for you. So finally, I could not take it any longer. I finally surrendered. I remembered watching um, uh, a link from Nick Vovich. I'm not sure if I said his name right. He's powerful, he's a powerhouse. When, from when I watched that video, I wept. Mm. I wept like a baby. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm available. Send me, I will go. And from oh. there on. Okay, so you surrendered to God. The most scary thing was just to talk about this condition. What happened when you did it then? You did it, right? Yes, I did it. So um, I decided, okay, I need to have a game plan. What am I going to do? I am in the fashion industry. No one knows about this condition. I've been rejected from when I tried to put it out there. I was rejected from that um, industry. So I had to come up with a game plan. I decided I am going to do a photo shoot pretty much a campaign and pose for myself. So I began to look for photographers, um, designers here. And again, everyone said no. 
Mm. We are we do not want to deal with this aspect. If you want to cover up, that's great, but we're not going to take on that. So deep down in, I knew I had to do something. So that was just a stumble block on my way. I had to keep going. God was sending me and I knew he would provide. So I reached out to a photographer, um, Joey Rosado in New York, and right away he responded to my email. Yes, I will do this. So I made my way to uh, New York and did a photo shoot. And from there on, I called it Be Revealed, Best Foot Forward campaign. And from, from that time, I've been putting my best foot forward and I never looked back. And you have a success modeling career it hasn't held you back N well no it has not because I've been hiding it but it's it's a secret that have been keeping from the rest of the world and now looking back and where I am now this is this is my beauty and this you is are it beautiful oh thank you so much so you know everyone struggles to some degree with insecurity and self-esteem issues everybody and we all have a different narrative in our head to the reason that we don't fit or don't belong every single one of us there's a moment so what would you say to people who are watching who maybe are feeling held back by something that they're ashamed of or that they don't feel like they're good enough? What, what, what advice would you give? I would say beauty is in you. Beauty is in all of us. God created us. If he created us to resemble him and we look at him, what we know of God, he's beautiful and in all aspect. And who are we as he's creations to think we're not beautiful. Beauty, beauty is inside of us. We are all beautiful in our own way. Whatever it is that make you feel less of a person, that you're not beautiful, perhaps it's something you heard or something that someone has told you. Use that and empower yourself deep, deep inside and find your real beauty. What you're looking at is outer appearance. It's outer beauty, but the real beauty come from inside. Mm. Be real beauty come from God. So we are all beautiful in our own way. That's what the Bible says, actually, that beauty is in the character, it's in the heart, and we need to start looking at each other that way. Thank you so much for encouraging. I know there's so much more, but you are an inspiration. <laughs> Keep being the inspiration that you are. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And be encouraged today. You know, God doesn't make junk. That's what they say. And I think it's a great saying. You are not junk. You are not a mistake. And that you are beautiful. And, and let that beauty shine from the inside out. The minute we start looking on the outside and judging ourselves, we're going to hold back the beauty that God's put inside of us. We have to find ways, like Berlange did, to let that beauty come out. And the world needs what you have to offer. If you need someone to pray with you just to kind of kill those demons in your head or those voices from your past, we would love to do that. That number is one 273 4444 Give us a call. We would love to pray with you. We'll be right back.